Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome aboard. This is the Sunset Safari on Safari Live, and we are now at Eco Training Pridens. This is where we're going to start off this afternoon, and you're right here with me, Chris Erasmus, and with me on Camera Ops is Panda Glitz. And what better way to start off than with a herd of elephants? And look, there is some calves. We've got a big old female or elephant cow with two calves and it, they are very similar in age I doubt whether both of them are her calves there is another calf to her left one of them is very likely her calf but she's probably also looking after the kids of one of her relatives which will be one of the related females within this herd it could be her mother or sister or grandmother niece cousin even daughters so elephant cows do that they do that well we found a small python we moved on from Talangumi because well we didn't see him and he didn't look like he was coming up anytime soon so we thought we'd go for a little meander Look what our meandering has provided. When you see a snake, just enjoy it. Don't go and handle it. Don't jump up and down. Don't stamp your feet and freak out. That's probably what you shouldn't do because, you know, the snakes feel very threatened. Look, there's the head. Look at that long body, how vulnerable the snake is. So as soon as you start jumping up and down and making a lot of movement, they, they get threatened. They feel like something is about to threaten them. They go into defensive mode, which is frightening. Most snakes that go into defensive mode, they are actually just protecting themselves. We're going to sit here probably for quite a lot of the afternoon, hoping that these chaps get up and do something. There are two, I suppose, animals of major interest in this group. There is the S8 male lion, who is behind a bush. Now he's just rolled over, he's got blood on his foot. Can you see that, Paul? See that chap just over there? Yeah, if you zoom in right there, center frame, you'll see some blood on the S8 male's foot. There you can see the bit of injury on his foot. That looks quite nasty, actually. That's a nasty gash. Ow! That must have come from another lion, surely. Unless he... Oh, he's up. Unless he managed to kick a incredibly sharp thorn. All we had to do was scratch around a little bit and we found some tawny bodies. Some very tired and full tawny bodies with a slight gas issue. And we are downwind. It's not ideal, but we have got a young male and a female lion and that's exact the zebras knew they were there all along i imagine this is the lions from this morning and whether they can see them from the dam wall i'm not sure because i definitely can whether they can just smell them because the wind is going in their direction i can definitely smell them <laughs> or whether they just were around this morning i couldn't answer that but oof, my goodness what did you guys eat? Well, more than a mere 600 meters away from the lions. And we've got the two cheetah boys. Also fly. I genuinely thought from what I heard this morning with all that activity that these boys would have just left. <laughs> they would have just left the area. There are lions around, guys. And you know it because you saw them this morning. Same judging, 600 meters is really not that far. The lions are sort of to the east of that quarry that we showed you, and these boys are southwest. It's amazing. We don't normally sighting hop, it's not really our style, but this is part of the story here. I mean, it's just incredible. And I would imagine that the wild dogs have run off the wolf. 
We just completed the Medicue trifecta. Lions, cheetah, wild dog. We literally just bumped them when we left the quarry. I believe they caught an impala and they're just finishing that up right now as the sun is going down. <laughs> oh, you just couldn't write this stuff. I guess they were in the area this morning. I just didn't expect to bump into them. But we won't stay with them too long. I don't... We don't show dogs in the dark. So once we lose a little bit more light, we will head on. But it's good to see you guys. We are a fair bit away from the quarry now, I would say. The lions and the cheetah are the closest. But they are still in the sort of same area. This is actually where we had them the other night. On this side we found something rather unusual for you, very exciting. Probably only the third time I've managed to show you a reed buck ever. They're normally so shy and these three females for some reason, there's two on the right, one on the left pretending to be a termite mount, they are nice and relaxed. Now they have got the company of two beautiful water buck. Maybe that's what's made them a little bit more relaxed. But either way, I'm just really excited to be able to show you a reed buck. This does not happen often. They are just too cool for words. Honestly, this is probably one of the rarest antelopes we could see here. In fact, the three rarest species of antelope to see on Amakala is the mountain reed buck, the steenbuck, and the grijsbok, which is very similar to a steenbuck, but a little bit more gray in color, hence the name grijsbok. It literally means gray buck. Okay, so we're trying to be patient. Yes, there it comes. There's an artwolf. We are having all of the artwolf luck. This is a different one to the one we've been seeing. A rather large one, I'm guessing another male. Out on a mission tonight. Looking for food. Ah, oh, this is too good. Look at that fluffy tail. I'm hoping it's going to come back this way. Now the winter months are renowned for being the best time to see all of the crazy cool nocturnals. Ardwolf, Ardfark, even striped polecats. And if the last week is anything to show, it's 100% proving itself and we're not even officially in winter yet. quintessential sound of Africa there and I'm very glad we got to hear that he's been struggling with signal and then he started calling it's an inopportune moment and then we got him we've uh, benefited from <laughs> well I mean what have we benefited from Steve Falconbridge was here <laughs> patiently for two hours and we came past here after our last lion sighting and there is Tavangumi, the male leopard, in his tree eating his impala. I did offer this to Steve just before any of you um, tell me that I've stolen his sighting. He said that he's too far away and that I'm welcome to hang around here. So this is Tavangumi, the male leopard. And in case you don't know, he is on the reserve north of Juma, which is the reserve we cannot traverse, but obviously he can. So I suppose you might describe what we're doing here as visually trespassing, but that's okay, we don't mind visually trespassing here. And Tavangumi is the dominant male leopard of this area, and he does come down onto Juma as well. We do uh, thank all of you, of course, for joining us on this magical sun 
Set Safari. It's been a wonderful Sunday. We look forward to seeing all of you again tomorrow morning for the start of a new week. June starts this coming week. Can you believe it? We thank you for your questions, all your comments, all your feedback. It's always lovely to engage with you. And as always, we'll be live with you again tomorrow morning from all of our wonderful locations. Who knows what this Monday will provide. But from myself and the rest of the crew, thanks for joining. A wonderful Sunday further. We'll see you in the morning. Good night and goodbye.